One of my favourite things about Prison Architect 2 is what we've done with career mode, and giving a lot of structure for players with different play styles, get those dopamine hits by completing levels and progressing and ranking up. Career mode has something like 18 levels between like the normal mainline scenarios and then all the optionals where we kind of not just teach the player the game but also give them a bunch of challenges and then give them a bunch of levels with challenges to go build their own thing. But to make sure that we give as many players with different play styles the opportunity to really engage with the game and get excited about it in the way that we used to when we you know played like the early management games back in the day. Here's a little uh, little snippet for you. This person here used to be me. The first thing that I did when I found out that there was a, like a back-end character creator in, in, in Unity was like, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna make my little me. But so you've got a few different characters that'll come up through your scenarios and they'll give you jobs to complete. So at the beginning of career mode, there is quite a heavy focus on the basic construction stuff. So things you're going to be doing is you're going to be building cell blocks. You're going to be learning how to build cell blocks on multi-floors. And then as the game progresses, you'll get a lot more specific challenges. So like later on in the game, you're going to be playing a prison that's got a lot of escapes. So you've got to find all of the escape tunnels while you're there. And one of the last scenarios, you will load into a prison which is mid-riot. And you've got to quell that riot before the inmate's able to take control and shut the place down. The original Prison Architect, they were called Prison Stories. It was a much smaller set of missions and quite story-driven as well. But what we've tried to do in Prison Architect 2 is give the player more of a presence in the game and a motive. So you're basically running a company. So there's progression built into there as well, where you want to expand your company, expand your admin team. And then as you progress, you also unlock new features through the staff that you add to your company. And there's kind of a world map hub as well that you travel around. It does act as a tutorial as well for players that want to learn about some of the features, but it's a lot less kind of shoved in your face. It's more about the progression and running a prison company. Animation is woven throughout every element in the game, but that career mode does utilise all of the systems that we've, we've created. Because we created the facial expression system, which they use to create pop-ups with the character faces on and stuff like that. We use the facial expression system for the mugshots, and all of it's interwoven, and it's, you see it's everywhere, no matter what part of the game you look at, to some degree. I think for you, Nat, like you were talking about we always wanted to do a campaign mode as well for the game and... We took it out of the original pitch. Yeah. I yeah, remember, I remember, I banged on about it for so long. It's like, we need a campaign with levels and scenarios. And we took it out because the scope was huge. And then about a year and a half in development, we went, no, we could really do with a career mode. So yeah. I was really, really pleased about that. Yeah, definitely, yeah. It's become <laughs> one of the game's like main USPs as well, I think. Because Prison Architect 1 was developed over like 14 years, including yeah. us. And we've had two years, but it's been that balance between well, we want to put all the staple features in the game. I mean, the core game is the core game. It's brilliant, it's beautiful, it's a lovely little system thing, but some people just can't jive with sandbox modes, and they just can't for whatever different reasons. So it's really nice to be able to give lots of people lots of different ways to play the game. Potentially opens it to a, a bigger audience of people while still, hopefully, supporting those kind of core prison architect players. And the other thing I think about campaign mode as well is the way we've got that, this world map which we can populate missions on, mm -hmm. and it's kind of shrouded by cloud cover yep. on the edges, but if, every time we want to introduce new content in the feature, it's also a place where we can expand that career mode map and teach the player about that new thing. We can well. absolutely bring back some of those clouds and there'll be a little hidden island that no one knew about, and then the new features come in. Yeah, it was built with that on purpose, so it could be really, really modular. We should be able to pick it up through their post-release process and content and all that sort of stuff. And put some new bits and pieces in. For me, it's kind of fixed a little bit of that problem with Prison Architect 1, where we were the original developers of console, integration was still on a PC, but the way we would message new things to players was different on each platform. Mm -hmm. One yeah. had the prison stories, one had like CEO letters and things like that, whereas this new campaign mode, we could do the work once for, for all platforms. Yeah, absolutely, we can. It's a really nice way of doing it.